Hello, welcome to Laugh at Lisa. I'm Lisa here today with a special video for Europe and me. Today we're talking about rock all. No, that's not another word for fuck all. It's an actual thing, I promise. And note to say that this subject is extensive, so if you're interested in learning more, there is plenty of literature out there. I encourage you to go and look it up. But in this video, we'll be breaking down the rock all subject in three short points. So let's begin. Number one, what is rock all I hear you say? I'm glad you asked, internet. Rock Hall is a small rock situated in the North Atlantic Ocean. More specifically, it's between Ireland, the UK, Faroe Islands, and Iceland. If you want to be nerdy about it, it's also referred to as an uninhabitable islet. Islet? Islet. But for the sake of keeping this simple, it's a flipping rock in the middle of the godforsaken ocean covered in bird poop. Okay, good. So why are you talking about a desolate rock, Lisa? What gives? Well, let's just say this rock is kind of a big deal. It's basically the most popular girl at school. Except, it's a rock? Rock Hall has been sneaking into our headlines a lot lately because its legal ownership and access to its waters have become a bit of a heated debate. Currently, the UK claims ownership to Rock Hall. Shocker, I know you didn't see that one coming. Surprise! But interestingly, Ireland does not recognise this claim and Rock Hall's other neighbours, Iceland and the Faroe Islands, which are part of Denmark, claim their own parts of the surrounding seabed. So what does this mean? Well, it's like as if your friends from Iceland, the Faroe Islands, Ireland and the UK all got in a boat and then you just went and sailed past this bloody rock in the middle of the ocean. Then your UK friend is like, ooh, see that rock? That's mine. And then the rest of you are like, no, it's not. That's it, that's what not recognizing means. In practice, of course, it's a little bit more complicated, which leads me to point number two. The UK's claim to Rockwell was made official in 1955, and by official, I mean that they sailed out there and stuck a flag in it. That's how you claim ownership to things, by the way, you just stick flags in them. Earlier, my friend was having a falafel bagel and it looked really good, so I stuck like this miniature Irish flag in it, and then she had to give it to me. That's how claiming stuff works. Anyways, so what was Britain's motivation for making this claim? Aside from a slight preoccupation with taking things that don't belong to them. You guessed it, the Russians. No, seriously. Back in the 50s, the UK had a missile testing range in the Outer Hebrides. That's a group of islands off Scotland. And due to political tensions at the time, they were worried the Soviets would set up on Rock Hall and start spying on them. I mean, it sounds a bit paranoid, but I guess you had to be there. Legally, the Soviets could have done this because Rock Hall wasn't claimed by anyone. So the UK, like the fat kid clambering for the pinata sweets at the birthday party, grabbed what they could. And it's kind of stayed that way till this day. All neighboring countries fished there. Everyone was fairly content. No major scraps just yet. Which brings me to point number three. So up until recently, thanks to EU fishing regulations, neighbouring countries had permission to fish around Rock Hall. Because the European Union regulates European waters, Britain couldn't kick up a fuss. Do you see where I'm going with this? Two days after the UK officially left the EU, shit went down at Rock Hall. Scottish government officials boarded an Irish boat and warned the skipper that fishing within 12 nautical miles of Rock Hall was legal. The Irish defence here remains the same as in point number one, which is that they don't recognise the UK's claim to Rock Hall. This is actually a uniquely interesting point regarding Ireland's stance in all of this, as it has not expressed interest in claiming Rock Hall for itself, and only state they don't believe it belongs to the UK. So why is this interesting? Two reasons. Ireland's coastal relationship with Rock Hall goes back long before 1955, just like Scotland's, where they both enjoyed unique connections to Rock Hall. Some academics have suggested that the monk explorer St. Brendan quite possibly visited and recorded Rock Hall way back in the 6th century, and both Scotland and Ireland include Rock Hall in its ancient mythologies. There now! Did you learn something? That's very interesting. Well, I think so, obviously. So now Ireland's kind of like, hey, We've been fishing around Rock Hall for many years. It was never a problem when the EU was regulating the waters. So why don't you just calm down, cool the jets, share the love, kumbaya everybody, yeah? While the European Union has extensive powers to regulate fishing in the waters of the EU member states, the departure of the UK has reopened the Rock Hall debate. Elizabeth MacDonald 
chief executive of the Scottish Fishermen's Federation said, the exclusion of EU vessels fishing around 12 miles of Rockall is a direct consequence of the Brexit fisheries deals. And it is important that EU vessels comply with the new rules. If they fail to do so, they will be fishing illegally, something that the EU strongly opposes. Bit hostile, bit prickly, like a giant prickly thistle. So there you go, that's the Rockall debacle. More on this story as it develops. If you want to know more about Rockall, there's plenty of articles and videos out there that discuss this ongoing debate. This is the only good video though. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Check out Europe and Me for more stories on the latest EU developments. There is endless to enjoy and learn at www.europeandme.eu. Okay, that's it, goodbye.